Ninguna que borre, ¿por qué? Si tú hay borre, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Before we go there, we should throw some bread there. I think. Something I noticed that no one seemed to have mentioned so far is when using this Insta360 3 meter selfie stick is makes a lot of crackling noise that you can hear in the video when there's movement. <laughs> Yeah, this is cheating, uh, three floor play. Oh my god, this is heavy shit, Lodi. Heavy, yeah? Heavy, yeah? Oh, oh, oh. Yo, 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 yo. Relax, relax, John. We don't fuck it up now. No pressure. Yo, Nick, grind me game and shit. Any watch up? What watch up, Nick? Oh, there, the bubbles. Wait. Oh, yeah. I'm actually recording this on the Insta 360 ONE RS without any color correction, editing, see how it comes out straight from the camera. So this is being recorded on the new 4K boost lens in 4K, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, linear mode, 24 frames per second. The audio is straight from the internal mic. There's a dog barking outside. I don't know whether you can hear that. So I also have a fan going here. I don't know whether they'll be picked up. Now I have the fan turned off, a lot quieter, but a lot warmer as well. So how did I end up with this 360 camera? I killed both of my GoPro cameras died on me in uh, two days. So the first was the GoPro Hero 9. I put it underwater to uh, do some recording. After I brought it out, it was making some funny noises. I thought it was just coming off from the mic, but it wasn't. So somehow water managed to get into the battery compartment and because it was salt water, nothing much I can do about that. This is the first time something like this has happened to me. With GoPro cameras, I've been using GoPros for a long time. So after a while, you might want to pay real close attention to the latch. And if you are feeling not too confident, maybe you want to change this uh, door here, you know, something to think about. So after this diet, the next day, I turned to just using my old Hero 6. That same day, it started to act funny. After a while, it finally just wouldn't turn on. So I tried doing a couple of things, but just just couldn't bring these cameras back to life. So I've been using quite a number of cameras over the years. In between, I've also been using a lot of waterproof cameras. So even if I put it like this, it's also, we are also in the shop. I've never owned a 360 camera before, much less a used one for my fishing videos. So I'm definitely no expert. But I'm gonna give you guys my very ominous first impression and review of the brand new Insta360 RS camera. This footage you are seeing here is uh, my first ever time using this camera. I was using the 360 lens and this is reframed using the Insta360 mobile app. David and myself, we were heading into EAK, so I decided to use the invisible selfie stick to get some recording here. And this is early in the morning, so it's under fairly low light conditions. Mm. We're going to a ditch, you know. Lah. At this stage, I'm still very unfamiliar with the Insta360 apps and still feeling my way around but I have to say the apps are pretty intuitive and very interesting much better than the ones GoPro has I 
has the plan. I've always been intrigued by all these 360 camera ever since they came out to the consumer market. But there are a few things that help me back. The biggest being the extra workflow. You got to shoot and then edit it in a different program, export that into your editing software. They were more expensive. The file size are huge. Uh, all these things help me back until now. Shooting this with the 6K. White screen. Let me share with you some of my initial thoughts when I got this camera. So my first impression when I got this is missing a pouch or carry case. When you buy GoPros this day, it comes with a pouch, which is pretty nice. So I think Insta360 would be nice if they have a pouch to keep it in. Because now we have to buy these things separately. So I got this DGY pack, small little hard case. All this adds to the cost of ownership. One of the things that I didn't like almost immediately is this uh, flimsy looking SD card cover. It's like waiting to fall off and uh, go missing. <laughs> If it's during a trip, that will be bad. And the way it's designed doesn't instill too much confidence in this uh, waterproofing quality. Audio quality. There are three options in the audio setting that we can choose. The first is wind reduction, and then we have directional enhancement, and then stereo. So far, I've been playing around with the stereo setting. I watched a lot of review videos before, and read a lot of their previous models and <laughs> I think they sound horrible in you know, the audio. It loses out to the GoPro cameras by a huge margin. But uh, they've slowly made improvements and I think this one is, the One RS has improved a lot. But from my use so far, it's still not as good as the GoPro's uh, internal mic. Fishing action going on. It's more like I'm playing around with the camera. Let's see if I'm fish having the feedback. So one RS is about one meter away from me. So now you can hear me talking and water running here. Video quality and the color. Now the One RS has a lot of things to shout about. 4K half inch, boost lens, 6K video, vivid color setting, HDR video. It's a lot more than what GoPro has at the moment. You guys be the judge by looking at the video quality. I still think GoPro is better and GoPro has slightly wider field of view as well. One of the features that I like with the GoPro is the hindsight feature. Basically what the hindsight is, you lift the camera, turn on. It's actually recording, but it's not writing on the SD card. So when something happens, I just press the record button. It goes back either, depending on your setting, 15 seconds or 30 seconds, and it records that onto the SD card. So that's useful when you, know, you don't uh, keep recording and have a lot of data on our card. And we can capture action when something actually happens. So the hindsight in the GoPro is something that I find pretty useful. Now the Insta360 has something similar but it works in a different way. So they call it a loop recording. So what it does is uh, you select the loop recording feature and then you select either you want it one minute interval, three minute interval, 10 minute, five minute interval, 10 minute interval, and so on. If, for example, you select three minutes, what the camera does is it records in three minute loops, and then it goes back and rewrite over the last three minutes. When nothing is happening, you know, you just let it overwrite, overwrite. And then when something happens, you just press the record button and you will keep that section, it will save it. And then you just press the record again to start a new loop. 
So um, same, same, but different. <laughs> one is uh, something happens and you press and record. And then this one is uh, you stop and it records or rather save the file and then it starts over again. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Battery life of the One RS after using it for quite a bit. I'm not that impressed with the battery life. If I record intensively, that means could be a good day out fishing and using the camera a lot. It doesn't, it will just last me half a morning, I would say. If I use it sporadically, if I use it sporadically on and off, you know, it will last me half a day. So in terms of battery life, GoPro definitely wins over the One RS. I'm thinking of maybe getting the boost uh, battery, I think they call it, which is an even larger battery and trying that out. But the only problem with that is when you use the boosted battery, you can't use the casing. So something to think about. I think one of the good things about having the battery exposed like this is there's less uh, overheating issues, which I find it doesn't have so far any overheating issues, unlike the GoPros, you know, especially when they are using the hindsight or the loop recording function. Now the casing, not a big fan of this casing style, but I guess you don't have a, much of a choice because of the modular design. My concern is there's a lot of uh, nook and crannies, water, dirt and stuff will get in and it'll be more difficult to clean and I'm not too sure about putting this uh, underwater, especially out in the sea and having the casing somehow seem when you think about the GoPro which I've been using a long time. It started with the casing and then they did without the casing and this one has the casing, it looks like it's going backwards. One thing GoPros are known for, especially when they launch a new camera, glitches, bugs and stuff. So far, the Insta360 ONE RS has been trouble-free except one time and uh, the camera froze. Not when I was using it, I was actually indoors and fiddling around with the settings and it just froze. And I, what I did was I took the battery out, put it back and so far, it's been okay again. Definitely a lot less bugs and glitches compared to uh, GoPro. Now the indicator lights, there's one on each side. There's no option to choose if you can have one off and the other on. The only options you have is either leave them both on or both off. Whereas on the GoPro, I can actually select to have the indicator lights all of them on except the front which is probably a small thing i like it because i like to leave the front indicator light off a bit more discreet when i'm actually recording no big deal but a nice feature to have so far the build quality looks good except for this part here on the core unit or the core module this this middle part here i'm not sure whether you can see it's uh it feels kind of like those uh, sticky rubber, you know? so I hope it's not going to come off and become sticky in the long term. I'll report back on that. We come to the summary of this. I've used it quite a bit, so this is what I think. If you don't have an action camera, this, this could be a good option. Because if you get the twin edition, you have an action camera. Fairly decent action camera, plus you have a 360 camera to play with. Now if I don't have an action camera, I would choose the GoPro over this. And if I just want a 360 camera, I would get the Insta360 ONE X2. But the ONE X2 has been out for quite a while, so as of now, May 2022, I would wait for the replacement for the One X2, which could be the One Insta360 One X3. So in terms of action camera alone, One RS is not as good as the GoPro Hero. Not even the current latest Hero 10 it loses out even to the Hero 9. So this year we are expecting the Hero 11, so that will definitely be even better than this uh, One RS. 
although the one other is better spec in some sense over the Bupro Hero.